Okay, I would love to call uh, the meeting of the Metro Human Relations Commission on February 6, 2023 uh, to order. Um, we, I assume, have all the names of all the commissioners in attendance, and I'm confirming quorum right now, and I'd love for everyone to review the minutes and um, approve them. Can I get a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Any abstaining or against? Excellent. I think we have enough to um, move the motion. Minutes are approved. A quick financial update from staff. Anything interesting? Nothing particularly interesting. Uh, you have the report of where we are as it relates to the year. Um, the pressing thing that's coming up is uh, August when we have to be out of Parkway Towers and uh, where are we going to go and what is it going to cost? And there's not any answers to either one of those questions yet. Is it looking like Antioch? Well, uh, I would hope not. We have... Uh, we were required to um, give our priorities and um, to be centrally located, uh, to preferably be near uh, public transit would, are the two primary issues. Like right now, we're right across the street from the WeGo station. So I don't think Antioch would work. It's far. Oh. This is the first I've heard of this, so what's... No, the uh, lease... We received an eviction notice? Well, that was... The, that came probably more than a year ago, even before I came on, was that August of 2023 would be the drop-dead date for uh, Metro residents in Parkway Towers. Really? That's the first I've ever heard of this. No, it's not us. It's uh, public defender, mm -hmm. uh, audit, HR. Um, there's several others that are there. And we're required to to be in a metro facility. No, we're not uh, required to be in a metro because we're not in a metro facility now. We're in a leased place now. But um, the way they go about that, they ask you certain things to per to prioritize not only how much space you need, but for us, the idea of being on a, a public transportation line and being centrally located are two of our key priorities. Mr. Comment. Metro facility would include other resource things. In other words, we don't have to be the sole proprietor, but we would have to have control of the premises via the lease. Or a license and use it in a room. <laughs> so it is technically metro property. I didn't want anyone to think you're conducting business not on metro property. Mm -hmm. Would you be on the lease premises or something of that nature? And that leasing has to happen through metro. It can't be MHRC going and right. buying in its own building. And yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Primarily, there may be other stakeholders. Okay. Well, not that they don't accept you in, but there's something that they negotiate with me. Well, the reason why I ask it, I'm just wondering if there are any nonprofit entities that have space uh, which would meet those criteria. Okay, I'm unaware if there are. Oh, well, actually, I have not looked. Or well, you know, I mean, Casa Asafran. Uh, there's a facility uh, on uh, Charlotte Avenue where there are a bunch of nonprofits. I mean, I think there. I can think of any number of places that where there may be some space. Uh, I haven't looked at that, but. I'm guessing the metro process is somewhat um, entailed, like it's quite a process, and they probably don't do it per agency. They probably do a big chunk for everybody. So, and it has some sort of procurement contractual, from what I can observe from these buildings that they have currently. So, um, but yeah, I agree. There are a lot of places that do kind of open up their spots for a small shop like y'all's, but I don't know if metro would allow that. Um, okay. 
if, if possible, I'd like to move forward into the new business on the agenda. Um, first, um, I want to hand it over to Erwin, if possible, to um, speak about a former commissioner um, who has passed away and um, uh, go through the, the statement from on behalf of the commission. So uh, many of us may have known Bobby Poster. Uh, many of us may have heard of Bobby Poster. Many of us have received, may have received emails from Avi Poster, uh, but uh, for 20 years, Avi uh, was a- Is your mic on? Because I'm not so, hearing it. Uh, maybe I'm not close enough to it. Uh, for many years, Avi was a moving force for social justice in, uh, in Davidson County. Uh, he's a very dear friend of mine, and uh, he unfortunately passed away January 26th uh, due to a long-standing illness. So I would like to propose that the commission adopt a resolution, uh, which I think was distributed in your, in your packets. Uh, I'm happy to read it, but, uh, but I think you can all read it as well. Uh, it's in the back of your packet if you haven't seen it. But I think uh, given Avi's, uh, service on the commission and his work throughout Davidson County on many of the issues that we're concerned about, affordable housing, uh, immigration, refugee rights, poverty reduction, cash bail reform. Uh, I think uh, recognition by the commission is, 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 is appropriate. Thank you, Erwin. Um, yeah, Erwin's description is exactly accurate. He was definitely a driving force for all social justice. You would see him in every corner and in every meeting uh, addressing these issues in our city. And um, he he definitely lived the values of the commission even when he wasn't on the commission. Um, and so I was sad to hear of that and I'm glad that we are recognizing him. And if you guys have read it and are good with that, I would love to hear a motion so we can pass this. I just, for yeah. the record, since Erwin brought this up, I would love to give Erwin the opportunity to make the first motion. Uh, I would like to move adoption of the resolution and uh, as part of that motion that uh, uh, assuming it's adopted that, that we transmit a copy of this resolution to his wife, Joey, Joey Poster. Excellent. Second? Second. Second. Uh, against? Abstentions? Great. The motion to recognize Avi, Avi Poster has been so moved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Erwin, for doing this. Okay, um, moving quickly, we are in the season. <laughs> we are in the season of state legislation and they are coming fast and furious. And if you close your eyes, you might miss another bill headed towards Nashville. Um, so yeah, this one I just saw, I think this morning um, on the, the community, over, the oversight boards are trying to get rid of the oversight boards of cities with 500,000 people or more, which is basically Memphis and Nashville. So nothing subtle there. Um, and then uh, I, I'm sure you guys have heard they want to cut our council um, from 40 to 20. There are a lot of reasons that that's a problematic for me. What's problematic about that is we have a very democratic council because we have so many different people and voices on there representing small constituencies that may not get represented if it got much bigger. And that's, I think, their plan because they're not happy with some of the decisions made. Um, if this happens, it's gonna really mess up just our procedural um, uh, uh, aspects because there's an election this year that would require probably an election again next year. So it's very messy. Um, this is, I think, mostly we put this on the agenda to bring it to the attention of the commission staff. Is there any other action that we wanted to focus on? I think it's just so everyone's aware can I give you just a couple particulars on those two bills? Yes, thank you. House Bill 48 and Senate Bill 87. It would cap the number of members of the Metro Council to 20. It would reapportion council, council districts based on 2020 census. It would change the election cycle uh, to uh, begin in August 2024. It would also remove term limits it will eliminate runoff elections. Uh, the members would take office September 1, um, and it does not specify the composition of those 20 voting members. Um, and there's also uh, 
um, hearing in the House Local Government Committee tomorrow at 1.30. I was going to ask, uh, actually, this is about the second bill. Okay. That's okay. Um, I guess, are there any, is, are there any sort of advocacy efforts um, that the Community Oversight Board is, you know, um, working on? you know, the mayors, the city councils on this bill to abolish community oversight boards? And if so, like, how can we as a commission, like, uplift that? I just saw this today, so I don't know how long they've known about it. Because what's happened is well, session started last week, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think people are going through, I think there's a thousand bills right now. It's not, yeah, it's not only that there's a thousand bills, but there's caption bills. So like many of them are being written right now, like now. Yeah. And so that's, that's the issue for folks who don't know what a caption bill is, is that basically um, folks like legislators can submit a bill um, that has a certain amount of text on it that kind of tells the prerogative of the bill, but later down the line can then add more specifics uh, to it. Um, and so, yeah, I think a lot of these bills that are like popping up are, are caption bills. I can't, you know, for sure. I know like House Bill 48 and 87 was proposed before, but uh, I can't say for sure if 764 and 591 are caption bills, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the, this particulars were written yesterday and then proposed today. Or no, they, uh, they are not, these, these happen not to be captioned. Oh, great. They just haven't started moving anywhere yet. Okay. And um, that bill, those two bills, 764 and 591, would abolish all community oversight boards. It would create a police advisory and review committee for those affected municipalities. It removes subpoena powers. Uh, they are limited to seven members. A committee, um, oh, and there's a restriction in there that um, you cannot limit membership based on demographics, economic status, or employment history. It will allow for an executive director to be hired, and uh, it will have three-year terms and appointed by the mayor. Currently, there are 14 employees of the COB, and of those 14, I think 13 are civil service employees. But they also come from the community. They don't come from the mayor, correct? Uh, under the bill that's there. The new one, it would, but yeah. right now, as it right is, now, it's not like it that. Right now, it is split between um, seven from the community, two from the council, and two from the mayor's office. Yeah. I think the only other thing I want to put on record is just, like, we should not undermine the electoral uh, ramifications of these bills, and I think that there are other state bills to remove primaries and things like that that are also out there. And I just think as a city, um, I know in the last meeting I said, like, we don't want to get too entangled with the state and we are Davidson County election uh, or uh, a board. Um, but I think that as a city, we also have a right to battle against voter suppression against uh, our community members and, and things like that as well. So I, I do want to just note that from my comments of last month, there's a fine balance and we can find a way to find it. But um, yeah, I just, I, the voter suppression stuff is very scary. I think what comes to mind, thank you, Pratik, what comes to mind is that there is going to be a litany of these. Clearly there's a, I mean, it's some sort of battle with Nashville right now. And so as a, as a Nashville based commission, we, we fully do have the you know the ability and the right to speak up to this this offense that's coming to our city go ahead sorry i have a question for davy um you know i understand where the the bill came from to cap the city council at 20 people but what i guess what was it that caused this bill to be was there an event that caused this second um the oversight board bill to be filed i mean uh you're asking me to give you some rationale for a place that I don't find very much rationale there. So, um, uh, but I actually have a list here of a few others. Uh, um, I do think, I don't know, my personal opinion, it does appear to be somewhat retaliatory for, I don't know, the Republican convention or what. But uh, I know for me and just historically, 
uh, for those not from Nashville, when the consolidated form of government came, there were only three black council members then, and the population was such that Nashville proper could have elected a black mayor. So in all of that consolidating, it took 50 years for black representation to even change on the uh, city council. So uh, for the minority, for the African-American community, the biggest worry is a loss of representation. And how, based on 2020 census, some neighborhoods have already changed. And that um, for that constituency, of which I'm part of and I often speak for, that is the largest concern, is that uh, representation will shrink. And that's not even to bring up um, immigrant representation. I mean, we only have, uh, uh, they count Zofat in the black, and Sepulveda is the only Hispanic. Yeah, go ahead, Erwin. Uh, so I, uh, you know, as many of you know, I mean, the I mean, the legislative process at the state level goes very quickly, uh, and uh, I think it would it's, it's in, it would be appropriate for us to encourage uh, metropolitan government to take all appropriate action to oppose any any legislation which impairs uh, the uh, ability of metropolitan government to. to and the citizens of Davidson County uh, to govern themselves. Uh, given uh, our limited staff, I would be concerned uh, if we spent a whole lot of staff time dealing with the legislature. I mean, Metro, Metro hires umpteen number of lobbyists. There are many other groups that are equally concerned about these, these bills, but I think it's appropriate for us to express our concern and encourage Metro to vigorously oppose uh, these and similar similar bills. Yeah. Um, yes. The 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 common understanding is that this is an RNC convention retaliation, but things like the community oversight board to me speak to wanting to um, limit community oversight in general um, and somehow give uh, that taking away that subpoena, subpoena power is clearly. The the, thr the like the real thrust that they're trying to take away from and that's the power that the COB has and that was a that was a democratically elected referendum based board that many of you all did activism to bring to back so so the amount of democracy at our city level that they're trying to decrease and eliminate is is quite frankly shocking to me um, yes the subpoena power was taken out after the referendum passed uh, in the state legislature. What is done now with the COB is the Metro Council has authority to yeah. issue subpoenas. So a process, they took it away from the COB, but the here locally, there was an agreed upon process that if the COB needed a subpoena, that the council had a, created a process by which they could ask them for that. Yeah, so thank you. That's a great example of all the loopholes you have to create to just run your city democratically. Um, so yeah, I agree. We could we could definitely get a statement. We could definitely make our voice heard. Um, I also agree that there are many that are going to be, many of us have already been on the on the Hill. There are many that are involved in this. There are committee meetings, as, as Davey referred to. That's where, the, where you show your support. That's where you pack the room. I'm sure those rooms are going to be packed with Nashvilleans. Um, but of course, we can go if we want as well. And but I, um, there are there are bodies and advocacy groups that will be very active on this. But it's a lot. I have to say, there's an inundation right now of and, and just an overall shock because you thought you knew at the state level the the wars you were going to be fighting, and then you're getting all this Nashville-based stuff that's that's kind of unbelievable. So wh what I can suggest is. Um, you know, we don't want to write a statement right here, right now. Um, we can possibly one of us can create one and we can um, approve it at the next meeting. But if there's something more um, consequential that comes to mind or that someone wants to suggest, like a group of us go to a committee meeting and, and you know, comment or whatever, if there's room for that, we could do that. 
but that's all that I can think of right well, now. Well, uh, even commenting. I mean, they don't let you comment. Be, yeah, uh, if you don't get a, a representative or a senator, and they have to have minimum 48 hours, and then they have to go talk with the chairperson to see if they can get you on. But um, I know for um, this House Bill 48, I do plan on being at the committee meeting tomorrow. I think it has a uh, direct impact on the city in a negative way, um, of which I think would, could very well take us back uh, a number of years instead of moving us forward, particularly when um, the sponsors, such as Lambert, who's from up in Portland, and their county has seven, no, 27 commissioners, which I think it breaks out to about 500 and some odd residents per one commissioner. But he thinks it'll make us more efficient to double the size to 20,000 per one council member. So um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I do plan on being in there. Thank you. I, there, there's definitely an attempt to drown out voices, for sure. If we look at the way that they gerrymandered and changed the map for who's representing us in Washington, D.C. right now, there's not a Nashvilleian in Washington, D.C. So they're very good at figuring out how to make draw very strange maps to make um, to drown out the voices of, of those that maybe aren't the same as theirs. I, I was just going to say that, I mean, I think that hearing, knowing what's coming down the pike, like there could be potential legal, things like that. So I agree with Erwin, like we shouldn't be taking too much staff capacity when it comes to this. I think that um, just whenever there's opportunities to give updates, give them. And then like, I think we should do quick and dirty, you know, just a quick statement or something like that. If that makes sense, I would advocate to empower the staff to do that. Um, but I don't think that, I think there's so many people on it. I agree with Erwin on, on his points. Let me just run over this list real quick. Just to, you got House Bill 48, which would change the Metro Council. You also have uh, House Bill 1279, Senate Bill 648, which would uh, affect the music city center. It would eliminate the funding district. Um, and it's used to take the tourist accommodation tax that actually pays the debt down from building the music city center. Um, you also have H bill, House Bill 1176, Senate Bill 1326, which would uh, reorganize the Metropolitan Airport Authority. It would give the governor, the House, and Senate speakers control over the Metro Airport Authority. Um, it only applies to metropolitan forms of government of more than 500,000. It will be comprised of 11 members, four appointed by the Speaker of the House, four by the Speaker of the Senate, and two by the Governor, and the Mayor would be an ex officio member. There's also House Bill 1197, Senate Bill 1335, which, is, uh, which would change the Metropolitan Sports Authority. Uh, it would give the Governor, the House, and Senate Speakers control over the Metro Airport um, Sports Authority. It would be 13 members, three appointed by the mayor, uh, one appointee for school district, three directors appointed by the Speaker of the House, and one uh, three appointed by the Senate, four appointed by the governor. And it says that they shall strive to ensure that at least one director is a female and one director is a racial minority, and they would be appointed to six-year terms. Then you have um, the community oversight. But you also have House Bill 1372 and Senate Bill 1407, which would uh, change a portion of... Um, John Lewis Way to President Donald Trump Boulevard. Thank you for 
that long list of extremely negative legislation for our city. Okay, so on that note, we are all in agreement that we will continue to monitor. Um, a lot of news, Tennessee Holler, Tennessee, and a lot of folks bring this stuff up every day, so you can follow it there as, as these bills are being uncovered, because there is a long list. The deadline was like 10 days ago, and it comes out uh, every morning. Um, thank you, staff, for organizing that for us. Metro budget process, anything more to talk about beyond where we're at? as an organization with it, because where we're at is basically where it's at, right? Well, we're still, like I said, uh, as I said earlier, right. we're still in preparation. We have to follow their matrix. We have to submit things in the way that they ask for it to be done. Uh, so we're preparing now to finish the budget equity tool that goes along with the budget in preparation for the first meetings. And when those meetings are, I will let you know all those dates. It's okay. I, I, I remember because you weren't here last year, so I had to do those, and it was like February to April type of thing. Um, I just, I, I'm just taken aback that a 2% reduction is being asked given how much, how much we give away, <laughs> you know, at every council meeting. So I just was wondering if there's any discussion about taking that conversation publicly. Like we just signed one of the biggest tips. I know tips are for later payment, but you know, I mean, we raised property taxes. We just did a stadium. Like why are we cutting our Metro um, salaries? Do you know? If I, I have know. no okay. clue as to, uh, but it's, it was just part of the budget documents that... Uh, I will say last year I had to do like what it would look like if you cut and what it would look like if you increase. So maybe that's just part of that process and it's and not... Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not like we're going to cut. It's just show us what it looks like if it's less and if it's more. And we're explaining it from an uh, equity standpoint using their tool. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot what that, it's just like a column that says something. It's several columns that ask you certain things about uh, impacted demographics and outcomes and. Yeah, okay, sorry, Erwin. Er, it, yeah. it was me. Um, what is, is this budget here? Is, it, is this what you all are discussing? No, we went through that at the very beginning of the oh, meeting. I must have went to the right. It's okay, you, when you see um, number four, financial update, that's typically we okay. do that at the beginning of every meeting. I got that's uh, our kind of very limited budget. Question, so this is from last year? This, this is our active budget. Oh. It's the one, so what, what the process goes like right now, Davey and Ashley and the crew are submitting what they want for next year. You have to do all that right now okay. for 2024. This is what's happening in 2023. It already got approved. Oh, Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, no, I was seeing that there were numbers under the actuals. I didn't know if this was from last year. This is the one we're existing okay. under right now. And they're working on, well, what do we want to look like next year, basically? So who do we want to add? So it's, it's very future looking. Um, but the process starts now to get it approved by the mayor and then go to the council. Okay. And we're a very mayor-centric city, so basically the mayor determines it. The, well, by the time it gets to council, it's kind of a done deal. And so Davey and crew are kind of saying, this is what we want. And the mayor's office will say, sorry, you got it, or you did, you know, that kind of thing, that dance before it goes to council. Does that help? Yeah. Okay, thank you for that question. Yes, Erwin. So in, in addition to uh, applying some equity uh, lens to our own budget, uh, we had a public hearing a year and a half ago about equity lens as it applies to the Metro budget. Uh, there was a, a non-binding resolution adopted by the Metro Council, I believe in 2020, that encouraged both the mayor and uh, the city council to apply an equity lens to its future budget and capital expenditures. And I would like to see our commission encourage both the mayor's office and the council to apply an equity lens to future expenditures in this budget, especially in view of the uh, allocation of Metro resources towards the East Bank and towards uh, the stadium. 
Uh, I don't think if, if we have a hearing and we just sort of let what we talked about go by the wayside, we just wasted our time. So I would like to figure out some way, if it, even, if it is even a statement out of the commission, while the budget is in process, to encourage the council to pay attention to how its resources have been spent in the past and how it needs to up its resource allocation in communities of need in the future. I think what's happened is that they did it and it's a column from what I remember last year and it says like how it's, it's and, it, and I think every department has to answer to it. So it was deployed throughout Metro. I think the question is, does it get at the essence and the spirit of what we were trying to put forth? Because right now you, you kind of can get away with just writing a few words in that column if I, yeah. So I drafted it for our department, so I can speak to what the tool looks like. If that's helpful, I can do it quickly. So it's um, four questions. The first question is actually about 15 questions in one, but for every program that you're proposing, every budgetary thing that you're asking for, you have to answer questions of how are you embedding data-driven equity in your planning of this program? How are you embedding data-driven equity in your assessment and evaluation of this program? Um, you have to cite your sources of why you're saying those are equity measures. Um, the second question, you have to answer how you are using equity considerations and how you uh, recruit your staff, how you think about retention, promotions um, for your staff, so for your team. And then the third question, is, should have brought a copy of this. It's about um, strategies and methods that you will use for how you inform community members about the programs that you are requesting money for, how you will use data for that, and more questions about how you're evaluating your efforts. And the fourth question is, is there anything we missed? So it's all like just write paragraphs about that. Um, and that goes to Andrea Blackman's team, who is the new department, the, f or the new branch of the finance department um, that I think was created a lot of because the effort of this commission. Um, what happens once we submit that to them? I, I, don't, I don't know, Davey, you probably know better, but that's the details of what it's asking departments to report on. That's super helpful. That is more comprehensive than the one last year, I will say. So it seems like Andrea has taken it on, added a bunch of stuff. Those are, I think those are excellent questions. Um, so I don't wanna, you know, I think that's excellent. I, th I guess the question is just like, how do you aggregate those responses? So I think probably the next step was to get some uniform metrics of equity and make all departments respond to those. Those have their flaws too, because then that just becomes checking a box, but uh, those questions are really good. I don't know what happens to the yeah, data. So the, que so the question in my mind would then be, after the budget's adopted, to what extent have any of those metrics produced any measurable change in how Metro, how Metro resources are allocated, again, to provide resources into areas where they have not been provided in the past? And so that's a retrospective view of whether, whether what they're doing makes any difference. And I don't know if we have the bandwidth to do that. Hopefully somebody has the bandwidth to do that. Right now it just seems like it makes the person filling it out have to think about it, which is a difference, which is different than how it was before. I mean, if you're asking about a hiring in terms of equity, I don't think that that was happening before. So, um, but yeah, what's the impact of actually doing this? I think that's the question. Um, maybe that's what we focus on asking what what is the impact and and maybe we can ask Andrea I'm sure she's thought about that so if everyone's taking the time to be thoughtful about these questions that are very very uh, narrative and qualitative what what is the outcome of that we could we could maybe follow up with her as a first step well as I notice on the agenda we have on the agenda of uh, future uh, topics and guest presenters that might be one Pretty. I was just gonna say that I think we have people here for co public comment. This wanna do a time check. Feels like there's about 20 minutes left. So I wanna make sure we give them their opportunity. So just wanted to do that time check. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think that's the action. Okay, great. Um, 
we have a, a statement on the death of Tyree Nichols um, that Coast Officer has prepared for us. You all should have gotten it in your email. Um, and so similar to what we worked on with the legislation for trans youth, we'd like to just get thoughts and be able to move through this quickly. Um, yeah, so I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so, yeah, as you all have probably, um, you know, seen on the news in the past couple of weeks and, you know, months, um, you know, um, it's important that we acknowledge uh, and, you know, and uh, extend our support to the family of Tyree Nichols. Um, you know, I can read the letter if that's okay, or maybe if, is that, is that all right? All right. Um, so, also, like, I know some commissioners have, like, um, gave me some suggestions, and so right now I'll just read it as is and then talk about some of the suggestions. Um, Metro Human Relations Commission would like to issue the following statement. Uh, the Metro Human Relations Commission extends our support to the family of Tyree Nichols, the people in Memphis, and the larger black community in the wake of the brutal murder of Tyree Nichols on January 7th, 2023. In the weeks leading up to Friday, January 27th, the media and Memphis police have been counting down the, rele the release of the body cam video as if it were an ab album release, further commodifying black death and police violence. The video itself was horrific to watch. We advise you to not watch it if you have not already. It is extremely graphic and inhumane. Instead of remembering Tyree in that body cam footage, let's remember him smiling and skateboarding. Despite the usual rhetor rhetoric, this is not a case of a few bad apples, but rather an entire system predicated on upholding white supremacy and state-sanctioned violence. In a post-George Floyd world, we have seen a myriad of reforms, increased uh, body cams on officers, multiple cops on the scene, tasers and batons instead of guns, an increase in black and brown officers, etc. In the case of Tyree Nichols, every one of these reforms failed all at once. So where do you, where do you go from here? More meaningless reforms that won't address the root issues. More lip service from politicians. We said never again in the murder of Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Michael Brown, Lando Castile, Breonna Taylor, and many others. We marched for George Floyd and led a global movement of liberation during a global pandemic and said never again. And yet here we are again. Rinse and repeat. Tyree Nichols should be here with us. He should be here with his family. He should be here with his four-year-old son. He should be here doing tricks on a skateboard. Justice for Tyree is ensuring an end to police violence and an end to systemic racism. Justice for Tyree means an end to meaningless reforms and reimagining alternatives to punitive justice. The Metro Human Relations Commission stands in solidarity with the people of Memphis as they mourn the loss of Tyree Nichols and protest the conditions that continue to allow these horrific tragedies. We stand in solidarity with Tyree's family as they fight for accountability and uplift their demands of charging the officers, uh, naming all the officers and public personnel that were on the scene, and releasing the officers' files. We also would like to uplift the community's demands on, of passing the data transparency ordinance, ending the use of pretextual traffic stops, ending the use of unmarked cars and plainclothes officers, dissolving the Scorpion, OCU, and MGU task forces, ending the use of task forces altogether, and removing police from traffic enforcement entirely. These are all the demands uh, from the community. And I've also attached uh, links to some resources, uh, so the GoFundMe to Ty Tyree's family, uh, the national page, and the Call to Action Toolkit. Um, you know, I know we talked about, you know, us being national-centric, but I thought this was very, very important to, you know, highlight, um, you know, it's not only, you know, in Memphis, Tennessee, but uh, police violence uh, uh, is all-encompassing. It affects not just one city, but all cities, uh, not just one person, but all people. Um, and so I thought that it would be very appropriate to address this and hopefully have the commission to uh, support the statement. So if we feel that way, we can hear a motion. I can, I guess, um, similar to the statement, could I do like a, what's it called, a motion to adopt a letter with the caveat that staff and commissioners can make the necessary edits for clarity and um, formatting? I've had some suggestions from um, some of the commissioners about some of the language, but it won't like necessarily change like uh, the intent of the, of the, of the statement. So... What has to happen here is that we, they need to be doing any editing that's oh, happening. Yeah. Um, you cannot be getting yeah. any from the commission. Uh, they can do it and we can, I guess, grant them the authority to do that 
and we would be fine with that as a commission, whatever that uh, final outcome is, without seeing it or being able to decide on it. Yeah, and just for a uh, disclaimer, um, this was like these uh, Commissioner Holmes came to me during this meeting, so to talk about some of these edits, so it wasn't outside of the Metro Human Relations Commission meeting. Okay, excellent. Um, it just has to be public. Yeah. The, the deliberation has to happen amongst yeah. us. So, just to be fair to all of you, so um, if that. But you disclosed it. You said the effect of it. Yeah. That's the way you handle it if you had a conversation during the meeting. Excellent. So I think what can happen is that edit can go to staff. They can incorporate it. We can have a yes. But that may be problematic. If one person says edit this. And then the vast majority of others say, I don't like that edit or vice versa. I think what Derek's kind of getting at is some, some level of deliberation over the statement would help guide us in attempting to. Well, uh, yeah, I guess the, the assumption is, is that if you have a concern, you're going to bring it up right now. Have, uh, I was just going to say, why don't you just walk through the edits real quick that way? But go ahead, Derek. I think first you need a motion and second to consider it. Deliberating amendments would be a proposed adjustment. Edit. Come to a consensus vote authorizing any staff to make the amendments for the final product. So I, perfect word. I was going to say, Derek. Okay, so can we get a motion to deliberate the statement that Kozar Kozar has presented to the commission? I'll make the motion to deliberate. Great. Second. Thank you. Any uh, no's or abstentions? Excellent. So that has moved. Anyone that's got edits or concerns or thoughts, please share them now. I have a question. Um, yeah. If the commission do, do people generally feel that y'all shouldn't like view the video? Yes, I do personally, okay. not as the commission. Yeah, I have the same thought that you that you do. I mean, I would like to take that statement out. I mean, I don't. I was like, I because I. For some people, like attaching videos and pictures to what was happening to black people during the civil rights movement made it real for some people. It's, uh, it's easy to turn a blind eye to something when you can't, when you're not looking at it. Uh, I just, as a commission, I didn't know if we were making that statement for everybody or if we felt like that anybody else is free to add. That's an excellent point. I, I thought you were asking me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we should make a, no. a broad, a paintbrush recommendation on whether we should or shouldn't. It's not relevant yeah, to the me. letter. Yeah. Yeah, I just, for context, I think my only reasoning was just, it's a very traumatic uh, video for people. It was very triggering. Um, so just wanted to make, just make that disclaimer, but yeah. not to say that you shouldn't watch it, but just saying, just to advise people of how graphic it is. I was saying the word is worded. It's at the advice of the commission to not watch yeah. it. That's a great point, because this letter is from the commission. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go, no, go ahead. Sure. Um, just, a, just a suggestion. I'm looking at the, the last paragraph. Um, I would suggest that maybe we um, switch out the first and second sentences, just thinking standing in solidarity with Tyree's family should be primary and then the citizens of Memphis. I think both are important, but his family is impacted the most. Commissioner. Yes, um, I wanted, first I want to apologize to you because I thought this is a great letter. But I also wanted us to make sure that it went out with, you know, all of the, you know, just tightening up the language. And that was done it, it, here in the meeting, not, uh, there was no conversation between us outside of this. So I just wanted to go on record with saying that. Uh, and the, I've made some suggestions, but I do think that every letter that we write, we should if this is going to be a, a trend, we should always start out with the mission statement of the the Human Relations Committee to a commission so that we can always type our mission in into what or why we're sending this out. That um, begs the question for me is to whom are we sending this out? Sorry, 
you guys can speak. But that was just a question I've got. Yeah. Okay. I have um, two questions for Mr. Tucker. Um, so the first question is, um, for historical context, has the commission previously um, made public statements related to um, things that happen outside of Davidson County, I suppose? Um, and then the second question is, how do you think this um, statement may be received by the Metro um, Police Department? I think, I think Erwin can add context too. Yes, I think we have. Um, if we made a statement, uh, I'm trying to remember which person it was. But yeah, I think the commission has made statements in the past. Um, I think any statement that would, I think any statement, see, I'm even now, because this is live and recorded, trying to think that's how to <laughs> answer this. Um, I think any statement could possibly be any statement that does not say that we have the best, most perfect police department in the country could possibly be perceived as being negative. Okay. I suppose, I suppose the concern comes from that they had just um, decided not to use our mobile diversity seminar anymore um, and, and it said a reason was not shared. But we hope to learn the logic behind the abrupt change, and so I'm just I'm concerned that there's a would be a further deterioration of relationships between us and the Metro Police Department. Great question or statement there that kind of turns a bit of a left turn. Um, you, you know, uh, to answer your question, Commissioner. Um, a few individuals want to do this work without any discomfort, but some work requires discomfort and diversity and equity work requires discomfort. And um, we've brought in lateral officers, some with 20 years experience who make it clear and have made it clear to us that they don't want to hear any of this. And I would hope that the department is not listening to them. And as we continue to strive to, uh, they also used our network of individuals uh, to carry out the training without us. And uh, that's interesting also. So um, it is my understanding that when you talk about trust and accountability, those agreements, all parties have to agree to what those standards are. And at this point, uh, I don't think that's the case. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, and I appreciate that concern. I had the same concern, but on the other hand, I think one needs to speak what what needs to be said. So, uh, on substance here, I have uh, just some minor editorial things. There, there are certain places in the statement where the word where Mr. Nichols' full name is used, and other places where only his first name is used. I would suggest his full name be used as a as a show of respect. Uh, uh, there are quotations marked for never again. I think never again is a movement. So if it, if it were, if we're, if we're identifying something in particular, I think those words should be capitalized. Uh, and the, the bottom of the fourth paragraph, uh, where it says reimagining alternatives to punitive justice, I would suggest subject, uh, uh, substituting policing to punitive justice, because this is all about policing. It doesn't extend beyond that. And I appreciate you putting it together. I would like to address the comment that you made, um, Commissioner, and and kind of take it back off of something that we discussed last meeting. I think the letter and the timing of what happened in Memphis should give us pause as a city to say, 
You know, this could have been Nashville easily. You know, so this may be a, an opportunity for everyone to reset the button and, and the dial and say, maybe we can come back to the table and look at how this, uh, the mobile diversity can be an influence for the good um, to help have these conversations where they need to be in the public space between the community as well as the officers, why they are going through training and becoming, you know, um, before they get into the community. So I'm hoping that this starts the conversation again, not about why we're not being used, but the possibility of what we can do if we are used in light of this. So I'm hoping for that. Uh, yeah, and I think for me, the question is of these demands, how many of them impact what we want in Nashville? Um, because ultimately that's what it comes down to is what are we asking for? What do you think we think is the solution to this? And they've already dissolved Scorpion and we're saying the other task force, um, top traffic stops. There was a whole traffic stop report in Nashville in 2018, which brings to mind like an update to that report, honestly, um, which if you guys got another researcher, maybe something, or I guess COB could do something like that, but that led to the COB in a lot of ways. Um, and that was how many years, five years ago. So might be time to update that. Um, both NYU and a local group did that. Um, <clears throat> so traffic stops have been a thing. They, they are a thing here. It's not, we're not waiting for a to happen in Nashville. They happen here and they can be deadly. Um, and then, yeah, we're asking that ending the use of unmarked cars and plainclothes officers. I think, yeah, that, that one's a big ask and maybe a little bit. And then, um, yeah, traffic enforcement entirely. So these are big yeah. demands. Yeah. I was going to add that, like, um, I, I do like the, you know, we should also, like, maybe pivot to uh, talk a you know, bit about Nashville. But I think for me, it was just like, these, this is what the Memphis community has mentioned. And so just uplifting what, you know, they're asking for. That makes sense. And what the family is asking for. Go ahead, Ashley. Um. I want to make a comment because I think it also like we were talking about the community oversight legislation like that's also going to affect Memphis. We know that these things happen in our communities just like they happen in Memphis. And when the video was released on Friday, like, you know, you turn the news on and Chief Drake made a statement about it. The Mayor Cooper made a statement about it, you know, separating a little bit that this is not, you know, this is a Memphis story and you know two days later there was a police shooting in Nashville in the middle of Buchanan Street on Sunday night two days after the video was released right so I think it's a choice um, of are we making this in solidarity like it is written or like if we want to make it about Nashville like that's a bigger restructuring of the letter um, and the demands right which like should come from the community I would think. Okay, so um, we can put that on a to-do list, maybe for executive committee to, to look at and then bring to the full commission about, we did a whole reimagining public safety series and, and talked quite in depth with this. The, the police department came, we talked to them. They have a, lia a community liaison that they've really elevated to be around to talk about these things. So I think that we that would make sense for us to get maybe a little bit more hearty in what our asks are there, if we want to. But on this letter, which is just uplifting Memphis, um, with all those discussions and deliberations that have been brought forward, are we comfortable with that, with the completion of this conversation to move into a motion for this letter? Uh, can we make one correction? Sure. Can we take out rinse and repeat? It's in the second. Uh, the third paragraph. And just a statement for clarification. Of the demands, and this is 
coming from the Human Relations Commission and of the demands that they have, um, does it create the idea that these are Nashville demands also, or are these some universal demands, or what? Um, and the reason I say this is um, in any future conversations that we have, not for us not having to address issues here or things that are said here that may not be the things that we desire here. Uh, case in point for me is uh, um, uh, traffic enforcement. Uh, I think that's not a consensus issue, uh, particularly when they have 70 hours, I believe, of traffic training. But here in Nashville, they don't respond to traffic calls as of now. Good. I mean, it would seem to me that, I mean, as written, this is supporting the Memphis community's uh, demands, and I think I would leave it at that. I was just going to say that I think the... I think what needs to happen is the implicit needs to be explicit here. And so I think just making sure that we're, you know, wherever it makes sense, um, mentioning the city of Memphis, mentioning the family, like it doesn't hurt to repeat that um, where it makes sense in the edits. I'm going to be the first to say I'm not a writer. I don't know where that place is. And so I defer to other people on this commission or the staff to figure that out. I'm not that person, but I just think that really, really, um, being specific, especially from an, a letter coming from an organization, it's it's uh, important. That makes me think because I'm sort of thinking along the lines of you. If this is, I was when I read this on Friday, I was thinking, are, is this the commission's stand on policing and the reforms that need to happen in policing? That's where I went, and then I thought, well, I have a litany of other things, and I don't even I want to research, you know, whatever. So. One idea we would so we also would like to uplift the community's demands of, and it's very specifically naming those demands. Could we just if we are not actually, because um, yeah, I hear your point. Like it would be of, you know, the community in Memphis's demands for Memphis. Well, of, that's where the point I was making is that. Yeah. If you put Memphis community's demands, it's, you know. For Memphis. For Memphis. Not for Memphis community demands. For policing, no. For Memphis policing. So, Erwin, are you suggesting that the letter would end prior to that list of, like, we stand in solidarity with Tyree's family as they fight for accountability and yes. uplift, their demands, uplift their demands for the Memphis community. For the Memphis community, period. That's what I was thinking. Just take out the list of stuff that they're demanding so that it's not sounding like this is the commission's new policy position on this stuff. Okay. And I would like to point out that it's not just the Memphis area is Memphis and Shelby County. So, uh, and because there was also Shelby County uh, deputies involved. So where we have Memphis at the top here, citizen, I put citizens of, of Memphis and Shelby County. I went and added Shelby County as well. Um, just a suggestion. Okay. If I'm fine with that, if so, here's my concerns right now. It's 5:30. We started very late. Okay. We have several people here for public comment. I would like for them to speak. And once we complete this, if we can complete this, I would like for them to speak, so we make sure we get them in, and then we can continue for if we if we still have quorum. Does that sound good to everyone? Okay, excellent. So, uh, can I get a motion based on all these edits that we've heard here to approve this? Yes, Derek. <laughs> List those edits. Derek, uh, those Derek. Edits. I've made some notes. And I know she heads as well, but I have two. I have. Can we can we just maybe have 
can we just say, like, if Ashley or Davey read them, then we can say make a motion based off the yeah. ad? I'm ready to check the ones off mine if you would like, one of you would like to read okay. it is, just so we are aware of what the edits are. If you all need to reach you, uniform or, or at least a majority of the consensus before a document is taken. No Your notes are probably. All right. Change the language of advise you not to watch the video that it is to use a cautionary language about it being traumatic. Switch the first and second sentences to put the family before the community. Um, to, to, to use his full name, use Tyree Nichols' full name throughout. Change punitive justice to policing. Take out rinse and repeat. Emphasize Memphis. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I was trying to go fast. It's okay. It's okay. Um, emphasize Memphis. Tyree Nichols family in Memphis solidarity be very clear in the language. Um, remove the details of the community demands after the sentence that we just talked about. Include Shelby County after Memphis. Okay. Uh, add the mission statement yeah. in the front. Take out never again in quotations or if it is an organization part of a movement capitalize it in the last paragraph um, uh, list Tyree Nichols name before Memphis and uh, the striking of of the of rinse and repeat and also a striking of the demands at the end of the letter and um, that's basically what I was. Yes. A couple of those, you have to make a decision, as I understand it. What? Well, the question was was it referring to the movement and were the places in all caps? It, so there, if there is a movement, refer to the movement. That's the make it capitalize. Are you referring to a movement? No. no, no. Okay. Then it stays yeah. um, lowercase. And putting Tyree Nichols' name every single time. Okay, you got that. Okay. Yes. So motion to adopt the letter with the caveat that staff can make the necessary edits that were just outlined. Um, Second. There you go. <laughs> Any abstentions or no's? Excellent. The motion has passed. Thank you, everyone. Um, we are going to open up for public comment. Whoever's here to speak to the commission, we're, we welcome you to the mic. You can go right there. Please introduce yourself. My name is Diamond Bell. <clears throat> good evening, good evening, everyone. I'm Diamond. I'm an organizer for Stenum Nashville, and I'm simply here tonight to invite you out to our community event on February 25th, 2023. Reimagine East Bank, Reimagine Nashville. It will be from 2 to 4 p.m. and located at the Easley Community Center. This community event is to uplift community voices and expectations regarding the Titan Stadium and the East Bank redevelopment proposal. We want to hold our city leaders accountable and have them and have them hear the community's um, thoughts in a unity field space. We need to build a neighborhood that will benefit all of Nashville because all of Nashville will be paying for it, and this is happening now. So I listed just a quick like five facts on here. Um, one of the main goals for the event too is to put out those facts to people. We kind of noticed that folks who are not in this like spaces like this, those big words and like big phrases that Titans or Sun or whoever is putting out there, we, they don't know what that means. So to just have the facts up for like broken down and for people to understand and be helpful in like the main facts. So first of all, keep in mind as we talk about all these enormous cash figures that there are 113 acres of public land on the East Bank that belong to us, the community. The proposed total cost of the new build is 2.1 billion. The Titans have agreed to put in 700 million and the state has committed to 500 million for a new stadium if it, if it has a dome. Metro is obligated to cover any gap, meaning taxpayers are responsible for 700 million to 1 billion. The mayor has opted to fund through this through a, one, a new 1% hotel motel tax. Additionally, 50% of future tax money in the East Bank will also go towards paying Metro's obligations um, on the stadium. Infrastructure improvements in the broader East Bank area will cost nearly 800 million to be paid 
for through our property taxes. This will be the biggest subsidy, um, taxpayer subsidy for an NFL stadium in history. So overall, we, Sun, is not against redevelopment on the East Bank. We all know that something needs to be done there. Our position is simple because it comes from what we have all heard from the community. We oppose using taxpayer dollars on a project that does not provide adequate community benefits. We support projects that result in affordable housing, good jobs, transit, and other things that help working people in Nashville. Thank you. Thank you, Diamond. Uh, just one last question. What is the, st so I know council had the vote. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else remaining to negotiate on or win on in this? That's one of the questions I have and I know other council commissioners have is what else is remaining to kind of negotiate or compromise on? It might be a K question. I'm gonna let it go. Thank you. This is complicated. Our understanding is this. Um, what the council voted on was to approve a term sheet, which is incomplete. But they wanted to, their understanding and what they communicated to many of us in our conversations was uh, that approving this, they are approving this to be able to move forward and continue conversations and negotiations on details. Uh, so there's more to come. There's more conversations to come. This comes from particularly uh, Council Member Toombs uh, said that we will continue conversations and negotiations and we hear your points around these things. So we know uh, um, there are pressures, obviously, uh, from the NFL and from the owners to move fast. What we're saying is don't let the tail wag the dog and slow down and make sure you get, we the public want answers to these specific questions and specific details hashed out. We want the public uh, to make sure the public is heard. At the, um, there were six, I think six public comment meetings that were held around the city and public comments around this were we want to make sure you hear us and we are saying this. So we're trying to elevate that uh, to a higher level. And in February of 2021 or 2022, uh, at a public event of fish fry on a Sunday afternoon, we had close to 200 people come out and they shared with us what they wanted to see. And we put that in a report. And that report was then submitted to, made public and submitted to the commission, at, to Metro Council itself. So uh, there is still, at, our understanding is from conversations with council, there is still uh, a process to flesh out more details, particularly around the financing uh, of it. Thank you very much. Um, tons of questions there, and, and especially on how we can insert ourselves, but that is a great overview and we can follow up with you all. So thank you very much for coming to the meeting. We appreciate it, unless anyone has. Okay, great. Um, anybody else for public comment? Yes, please. Um, my name is Peter Woolpoke. <clears throat> I just happen to be a former commissioner on this commission, so I had an opportunity to come in and listen. Welcome back. But, but let me also say one of the things that's very, very important here, and this is not my particular reason for being here, but that is detail. When it comes to financing that stadium, people need to look at the details because if you just listen to the people who want to put the building up, they're going to tell you what they want you to know. I'm speaking about this because I'm a native Washingtonian. I worked in Congress for five years. I was a press secretary. I know that the elected officials tell you what they want you to know. It is up to you to find out what the information is that's hidden and that can cost you your arm and a leg if you're not paying attention. But specifically, I'm here tonight. I'm here to represent Howard Gentry. 
I'm doing some work for Howard. Howard has got a program going at the uh, criminal court, uh, criminal, criminal court clerk's office. It is called the expungement program. Far too many people have no idea what that means. Specifically, what it is is this. People who have been arrested and convicted for, let's call them minor crimes, they wind up having a criminal record on their file. That record can prevent them from getting a car, getting a house loan, other sort of things. He would like to come to make a presentation to this commission so that they fully understand what it is, what that expungement program is, because 75 to 80 percent of the people who are caught and have convictions and do not know about the expungement program are people of color. They are prevented from, as a result of that, expungement program, put it simply, moves your conviction from the public view. It's all legal and above board. So he would like to have the opportunity to come down and make that presentation to you so you in some of your deliberations can maybe consider that and let, let other people know. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not sure who I can call or just have him show up. How do you want to handle that? But uh, at least to schedule him in so that uh, he can come down and make a presentation to you. I mean, that's a very important program. We would be it's happy to hear from him. Very, very important this is program. holding a lot of people back. So. Okay. Oh, oh, here's the other thing. I'm not sure who to call because I've called at least five times and nobody ever returned the phone call. It says right on the phone, leave us a message, we'll call, be call you back, and I never got a return phone call. So I don't know how you handle that, but that I think that really needs to be fixed. Okay. I think note taken okay. from staff. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have public comment at every meeting, so if he wants to come and describe the program then, that's great, and if he wants to schedule to be a speaker, I think that that's fine. Yes? Yeah. If we call, we'll get that done. Some of them we can actually talk to you so that you get on. You can tell him to call me. Uh, okay, I won't, I won't do why he didn't. He got that cell phone number and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's... Yes, sir. So he can actually call me? Yeah, he could actually call me. He could call me. I'm happy to give you my number, sir. Yes, he can. I'm happy. To, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Are we clear with public comment? Okay. And if anyone wants to call me, that's just... <laughs> you can call me. Okay. Um, so it's late. Yes. I was just saying, I don't mean you don't include your staff. <laughs> Ultimately, you make the decision as a chair. I hear you. For business yes. It's a very collaborative process between me and staff. Um, okay, there's a lot on here. Is Can we just, is there anything that's uh, pressing for y'all that you want to know about, especially in the, um, the old business? Um, category and then staff. Is there anything in the new business that you're dying to talk about? Which I don't need to talk about inequity in Nashville. I think that's very clear. But um, future topics and guest presenters. I I suggest we have an XCOM meeting this month to go through some of that stuff. Uh, we're kind of out of the loop. So I think now that we've dealt with statements and all that stuff, let's do some forward thinking. If that sounds good. Um, anything else? Dave. Time. Date or day or time that you all prefer. So What's the one that we always do that works? For is it for what was when did you come? Could you come? I think it was like a Thursday, eleven thirty. Thursday eleven is I, lovely for me. Um, was that good for you, Marcus? Well, I mean, everyone obviously can come to that meeting. Marcus um, came, and Amy came to one as well. So uh, Thursday eleven is so good. Which Thursday? Or will this we need like 10 days notice. 10 days notice? Yeah. Okay. Right? I mean, we have to, uh, seven, seven days. Okay. So it could be, it could be the 16th or the 23rd. Excellent. I'm not good for the 16th. I can do the 23rd. Until you can't. Until I can't. I, 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 get it I know now. you. It's going to happen. I know you. Okay. So let's get the 23rd at 11. 23rd. Yeah. And everyone join if you can. Um, then we can, uh, we can adjourn. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. And a second? 
Oh, 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 one oh, thing. Oh, oh. Oh, I meant to uh, make this announcement that uh, our commissioner, Dakota Gabon, is the new Davidson County Democratic Party chair. So we got some juice. In Excellent. Those. Not an easy job. Congratulations. Or yeah, I was going to say in this year with this with this situation. <laughs> Um, okay, so I got my second. No abstentions, no no's. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.